see. Welcome to everyone joining us to experience stories of resilience, hope, perseverance, and joy. Move over to a sport chair, a basketball wheelchair. Category of best video are. We love you guys. You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. We have a very special guest. Zooming in next, she is an 80 year old, or at 80. I don't know how old she is now, but at 80, she was a podcaster, award winning leader, podcast and YouTube advisor, and an international best selling author of the book. I gotta, I gotta read this title because it's a long one Gold in the Golden Years How to Create a Successful Business. Business with SOAR launch and grow plan to fulfill your purpose and passion to make your own gold. I love this. I need this book. Welcome to America Trends, Nan McKay. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be with you, Mary. I'm thrilled to see you. Where are you zooming in from, Nan? Camas, Washington, which is right across the river from Portland. And I am still 80 for another couple weeks. Okay, good, good. Well, I love this and I love that, you know, we're talking, we have so many things to talk to you about, but, um, you know, empowerment of women and people, you know, in our golden years, I'm, I'm creeping in there. So I really love this topic. And also, you know, you've been in, you know, an entrepreneur and in business for, for many years. You've seen many generations of people and um, you've kind of witnessed it all, I would say, right? And you're still in the middle of witnessing it. So, I want to, I have a lot of questions for you today, but I want to dive in from that vantage point that you have of seeing different generations and how they approach the work industry. Um, and you know, there's, I think every generation kind of says, oh, these young kids, they, they don't know how to work hard and, and it keeps going. And I feel like we're seeing a, a big shift, especially after COVID of how people approach the work world and what we're willing to give up. and. Um, so I want to, you know, hear some of your, your takes on the different generations and how they, they approach the work field. I would be happy to do that. I'm very concerned about what's happening in business today. Hmm. You know, we've got 10,000 baby boomers a day retiring, a day, which really means we've got a lot of managerial positions opening up. And the question is, who's going to be filling those positions? Mm -hmm. And the answer you might give is, oh, the next generation down. Gen X, and the answer to that is probably not completely because we have a big generation in the baby boomers and a smaller generation in Gen X. So that means we've got to reach down into our millennials and Gen Zs, and they have a very different outlook on business and life and what they expect. Yes. And that's what I would love to be able to talk about today. So let's start out with our generation. So let's talk a little bit about them from the point of view of what motivates each generation. Mm. Now first, we have to kind of define what we mean by the age ranges. So let's say for baby boomers, we're talking about mm, 59 to 77. And what turns them on? What motivates them in the business world is company loyalty, we can talk about why, mm. financial security, respect, and legacy. And do, now we move on down to Gen wait, X. If you don't mind me just asking a quick question about that, because sure. was that something that has been important to them from the get-go, from when they entered the workforce years ago, or is that becoming more important to them now? It seems like my, my perception is that that's, those things have been important to them since the beginning. You are, I think, very right, because here's why. The baby boomers grew up with prosper prosperity, why, and optimism. Why, why, why? Because the World War II had just ended, and therefore, we ended up with a lot of babies being born. 
And that was a whole different era where they were raised with people with a sense of duty, with a sense of loyalty, that were much more likely to stick with one employer all the way through. Remember back when the traditionalists really wanted that gold watch. That's what they wanted. Yes. You know, they would stay <laughs> for loyalty until they got the, the gold watch. Yep. Well, that's not true today at all. First of all, they're not even looking at watches. They'd much rather have an Apple watch than a gold watch. <laughs> and they don't even care if it's gold, as long as it talks and does what it's supposed to do digitally. Right. <laughs> But uh, you've got a real difference then in how they were raised. In fact, there's something really interesting, I think. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard or read of Morris Massey. No, I haven't. But early on, like in the 80s, I started studying what he had to say. He was a professor at the University of Colorado. And he said basically that your values are formed at about age 10. And so it's where you were when what generation you were in and what was happening to the events around you at that point. Mm. So if you look and, and the only thing that really changed your values after age 10 was something that was called a significant emotional event, like a divorce, a death, something like that. Uh, a major significant event might change your values. But other than that, you're pretty well formed at age 10. When you think about what was going on for each of these generations at age 10, you start seeing those values being played out in the workplace. Hmm. I, I just think that whole thing is really fascinating to think about. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I kind of cut you off and we were on this trajectory of talking about the things that are important to the different generations. So you were talking about baby boomers and then Gen X, what was what is and was important to them? That's my what generation. What is different about what is really different about Gen X is these were the kids that grew up in a time of change and economic turndown. Now, if you think about the latchkey kids, do you remember the latchkey oh, yeah. kids where you were given a key to go home because both parents started to work? That was the beginning of that two parent generation. Yep. So what Gen X wants, they turned around with the economic a downturn and looked at their parents and their parents got laid off. They didn't get that gold watch because they got laid off before they even got to that point. And they started seeing, hmm, if businesses are not loyal to their employees, then do I have the same loyalty that my parents had to their employer? And the answer was no. So what's important to them are things like work-life balance, flexibility, challenge and they can work with autonomy just fine because they were the latchkey kids right independent right and then let's move into millennials um and gen z are they similar or are they pre are they different from one another they are they are similar in the technology areas because they kind of grew up with it but gen y which is the millennials is about 27 to 42 age wise mm -hmm. and What's important to them is things like purpose. In fact, when you look at salary versus purpose, they're more focused even on engaged with purpose of their job. They're, there's a reason for that company to exist and they are part of that reason. Two would be collaboration. They, they're social, they like to be with people. What's really important to them is learning and growing, having those opportunities to learn and grow. And the fourth thing is more flexible, flexibility. Now, Gen Z is the 26 and under. So these, this is the next generation down. They want ultra they, flexibility, right? <laughs> well, they want creativity. But interestingly enough, what's really important to them is social responsibility, diversity and inclusion, because mm -hmm. they are a very diverse population and Technology, of course, because that's how they grew up. Yes. So you're seeing some differences, I think, between Gen Y and Gen X. I mean, Gen Z. Uh, but those differences are not as pronounced as they would be with a baby boomer, for instance. Well, you know, we're going to have to take a break here in a moment. So I hope that you'll stick around for one more segment because I have now I want to talk about what this 
looks like for employers and how the different generations can work together. Um, I'm definitely seeing, I'm having conversations with my friends that are in the Gen X and trying to figure out how to work with <laughs> the younger generations um, and how it all works together. So can you stick around and chat with us a little bit more? Sounds great. Okay, great. And people can find you nanmckay.com and at no. Nan Oh, oh that, is my, that is a business of mine. Oh. But uh, I do have another business and that is Nan McKay Connects. So okay. that's C O N N E C T S dot com. Okay, we'll pull that up um, in the next break so people can see that. So we're speaking with Nan McKay, and we'll be right back right after this quick break. 